Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 25, but I will be, we will only be reading 10 through 17. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 through 17. God is with us is today's title. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. Before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings are in, you are in dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on your ancestral house such days as have not come since the day of Ephraim, departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. The word of the Lord. This text is coming to us not like out of context. It's written in a certain place at a certain time. And as those of you know, I like to give the context before we talk about the text because it's always good to understand why it's there. Because sometimes it's easy to just pull it out and say what we want about a text. And this is a very special text because it talks about the coming of the Messiah. At least that's what it sounds like. Here in chapter 7, it comes after a chapter 6 that had a vision that was beyond compare. Chapter 6 is the famous Isaiah passage that says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, and I saw the glory of the Lord. And he goes on to depict what he saw in the sanctuary. Angels flying, the glory of the Lord going through the temple. In the year that the king died, Isaiah saw the Lord. The day that the person or the thing that was blinding him was removed, he saw the Lord. And then here in chapter 7, it's not just the next day or the next week. In fact, these are, this story continues two kings after Uzziah. So it is Uzziah's grandson who's now king, King Ahaz. And before him has come the king of the northern kingdom of Israel and also the king of the Ephraimites. And they have come to the door of Jerusalem and they're trying to take over Jerusalem. So here is not just a story about a woman who gives birth to Emmanuel, but instead it is about a king who's worried and scared. It is about a king who should be trusting in the one who placed him where he is. And yet, he is afraid. It is about a king who trusted the Lord enough until the time that he stopped. Isn't that the way our faith works? We trust the Lord until we decide, you know what, maybe we don't. Or maybe when, things, when life starts to squeeze us a little bit, our faith that we thought was amazing suddenly becomes not so amazing. Because it's easy to believe in God when everything is great. God has been good to me. God is great. But then when things and when life starts to squeeze you a little bit, we tend to feel the pain and say, well, where are you, God? Uh, I, my faith has been awesome. Where are you? Why is life squeezing me? Why am I going through this trouble? Why am I going through this struggle? It's easy when life is easy. It's good when life is good. But it's in those difficult moments when faith becomes real. And this is a moment that the king is going through. He may have had faith when everything was good, 
when the crops were giving food and peace abounded, when all was going great for him, he had plenty of faith. But now, when war is at his door, suddenly his faith has shivered. His faith has shriveled. His faith has become small. His faith was shaken so much that maybe it wasn't faith at all. And so God comes to him and says, ask me for anything. Ask me for a sign. Make it as high as heaven or as deep as Sheol. Ask me for a sign. And the king says, no, I'm not going to test the Lord. He still has reverence, even though his faith has crumbled. And so God tells him, this is the sign I will give you. There will be a woman, a young woman with child, and she will bear a son and his name shall be Emmanuel. And so this is the text we take out and we put it on Jesus. This is a prophecy for Jesus. But yet, if we read on, he says, he shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. What they were saying or what the prophet is saying is that within a couple of years, the people who are out there, the people who are bringing war, the people who are trying to bring you down will be gone. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The kings who are coming to bring you down, by the time the child is old enough to know good from evil, good from bad, what they can and cannot do, which is normally about two to three years old. By that time, by the time that a child can tell the difference, the kings that have come down upon you will be gone. They will be gone. So you ask for a sign, this is the sign. Those who have come to get you will be gone. Those who have come for you will be eliminated. Those who have caused you to struggle will be brought down. And yet, your faith is still almost nothing. This is why the, the Old Testament has a continual story of Israel going through the process of relationship with God, where there are moments of God is amazing and we love you so much, we're never going to let you go. And then they move to, well, God is good, but we can do these things on our own. And then they move to, well, we do have a religion, but we're doing well and we keep on forward. And then it gets to the point where they're crying out to God, why have you forsaken us? Why have you abandoned us? And even though this may be the story of Israel in the Old Testament, it also seems to be our story every day on our walk, isn't it? We have our moments where we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is amazing and God is with me. God walks by my side. Oh, I can see God in every situation. And then things get good, and it moves to, thank you, God, for all the good things, but I can do this. And then we move to, well, yeah, I go to church on Sundays, but the rest of the week I'm working hard, making my money, doing what I got to do. And then when it all falls, God, why have you forsaken me? Where were you, God, when my life started to crumble? Where were you? We go through that cycle, some of us too often, some of us it takes longer, but we all have moments of knowing completely without a doubt that God exists to moments of, well, where has God been during this time? Israel had went through it. Believers have gone through it from the beginning. We all have gone through moments. But it's not only about the moments, as I said before, during the inspirational moment, it is about the journey to that moment. What was going on that led to that moment? In this moment, it was a king full of doubt, 
a king who didn't believe because times were getting rough. And God said, don't worry, Emmanuel is coming. God with us, God with me. And as I think about and thought about this, what does God with me mean? What does it look like? What does it sound like? Because it's easy to think about a picture of Mary giving birth and the manger and thinking about God with us 2,000 years ago, what God did. But how does that look to you and me today? What does God with me look like today? When you think about Emmanuel, when you think about God with you, when you think about God in your life, when you consider how your beliefs work, how your faith is, is it growing? Is it just a seed? Do you have faith? Are you here because it's tradition and that's what you do? Are you here because you have work to do? Are you here because you're seeking? Are you here because you want to grow closer? Are you here because you want that seed of faith to grow into a big tree of faith? Are you here because of God with you? How does that look in your personal life? Your intimate relationship with God. How does it look? God with me. God with you. How does that look? Is it easier to just keep it as a portrait of Jesus being born to Mary in a barn in the Mideast? somewhere far away from me? Is it easier to do that than to say God is here today with me? God was here with me yesterday when I was going through that. God will continue to be with me as I go through life, as I walk through this journey, as I struggle, as I continue to climb, as I stumble at times, God will continue to be with me. And it goes into that whole, is God just an emotional experience or is God real in your life? Because for many of us, we have a moment of ecstasy almost. And that's when we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, that emotional moment, God is real. But when we come down from that emotional high, where is your faith? How do you express that faith? Is Emmanuel still God with you? Or is Emmanuel now God with others because definitely God is not with me? How do we decipher? As we move through this journey of Advent, I want us to journey together, to walk this journey of faith together. Because Advent is a celebration of the coming of the one. If we talk about automobiles and the advent of the automobiles was in the 1890s when they were really coming about. But here we're talking about something and someone greater than that. The advent of Emmanuel. God into, into human existence. God becoming one of us. Because it becomes more than just an emotional or spiritual experience. Jesus became like you and like me. So God with us goes beyond just the emotional and the spiritual. It becomes the physical it becomes the mental, the intellectual, because Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel, lived just like you and just like me. He experienced the difficulties of what it is to be human, to have those moments of high and those moments of low, to go through a day when we start off exactly as we wanted to, accomplishing everything we wanted to and ending it with accomplishing absolutely nothing. For we have those days. 
And God understands that not from a distance, but instead God understands that because God lived it too. Emmanuel is with us. Emmanuel came into human history. Emmanuel, God with us, continues with us. How do you express God with you? And this day, as I, I gave you some homework last week and asked that you would pray and meditate an extra 20 minutes a day on just so maybe outside of your normal prayer, I hope you tried it. Just dedicate prayer and meditation to just trying to listen. That was your homework last week. Your homework for this week. I want you to evaluate and to consider who is God with you? Who is God in your life? Who is God in your life? And you don't have to write a paper. You don't have to share or make a presentation. This is your, your own personal homework for you. So I want you to be completely honest. Because for, for many of us who grew up in the church, we always have the right answers and we always know how to say things. And, you know, how are you? Oh, God is good. We, we, we know how to say the things that need to be said and give the smile that needs to be given, even when we're not feeling that. But I want you to be honest with yourself, honest with God, honest enough to look in that mirror again, as that was part of your homework last week also, and say, who is God with me in my life right now? If I were to say, God is this, what is that? God is a person out there somewhere. God is a thing that lives beyond me. God is here by my side. God is here in my heart. Be honest. Because the only way you can grow as you want to grow is by being open and honest about who God is in your life. And also who you are with God. Are you the church person who knows how to say the things that need to be said? To give the smile and God is good and I'm doing well and, you know, quote the scripture. Or are you the person who's honest with God and honest with those around you and say, you know what? I'm not doing as great as I think I could be. So as we move into this week, your homework for this week is who is God in your life? And be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. God is a big boy. God could take it. I promise you that. Who is God in your life?